everyone wants to be a lion until it's time to do lion shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, everyone, you know, I coached high school football for 17 years where I built my businesses and stuff. I've been out of it for a few years now. And, you know, before I was a head coach, you know, all the assistants, we'd be like, everyone wants to be the man. You always want to be the man until you're the man, right? And then you realize what it takes to be the man. Like, you're not just coaching your position or, or coordinating offense or your defense anymore, right? You're now dealing with the parents and fundraising and all this other garbage, and it's the same with business owner, right? So it's like, you know, I tell people all the time, like, if, if, if you're not willing to do the work that it takes in the role that you have chosen for yourself, then quit. It's yes. okay. Quit. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're a loser. Doesn't mean you're a failure. In fact, I have, I've had guys um, who a year or so in, they come in and out of their program and they're like, dude, I'm leaving the program. It's helped me immensely. I'm like, then why are you leaving? They're like, because I decided to shut my business down. I'm getting out of this. I don't want to do this you, anymore. You gave me the clarity. I'm not willing to do what it takes because I don't love it that much. Whatever it is, or I'm going to go work for somebody else because I just want to. And that is totally cool. I have zero judgment on somebody that can tell themselves the truth. What annoys me is when you see the person who's repeating the same work year, three years, five years, 20 years in a row, not making any changes, not go, being a student of the business game, not dialing in their own personal discipline around what it takes to be successful. If you're unwilling to do that, then you're better off quitting and shutting the business down because as you guys know, the the juice ain't worth the squeeze if you're not winning. Yeah. You know, it's not for everybody. Not everyone has the stomach for it. And and again, I don't have the stomach to go be a, an employee somewhere. Yeah. Right? Doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It just means, you know, there's some people go be the greatest right-hand person in a business ever that, you know, you you see it with um I've had him on my show Cameron Harold. All right? He uh, if you know 1-800 got junk. Yeah. Okay? Oh, Brian yeah. Scudamore. Yeah, yeah is the visionary Cameron's like the implementer guy, whatever they call it, you know, and he's a number two. He's like built this reputation around being a number two guy, mm -hmm. you know, that really supports the visionary and he loves his role and he's happy in that. So I, you know, I don't think enough people are telling themselves the truth about what they want because they're, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying I've, I've always nailed this by the way. Cause I think a lot of times we BS ourselves or we, um, we say we want things because that's what other people in our industry have. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a coaching group years ago that there was like a, it was good people and stuff. I'm not ripping on them, but the culture was like, you had to build a business exactly like this. And this is how this had to go. And this had to go. And I remember just, it never felt right to me, you know? And so I encourage people to get honest with what you want. Um, you don't have to, I just read, uh, I read like a book a week. Hold on. Uh, 10X is easier than 2X. Oh, I heard Benjamin about this Hardy, book. Yeah, just Benjamin came out Hardy recently, Benjamin right? Hardy and Dan Sullivan, yeah. And there's a chapter um, about determining what you want and how you don't have to justify what you want. You know, mm -hmm. like I want to build a business where I only work two days a week and I pay myself $5 million a year and I live here, right? Whatever your thing is. People are going to question it. They're going to ask you about it. Go, really? How are you going to do that? Blah, blah. You don't owe it to anybody to explain it. It's what you want. And not enough people are unapologetic about what they want because we're running it through the filter of what the world thinks and what our spouse thinks. And obviously you want to be on the same page with your spouse with shit, right? But you, you know what I'm saying here? Like, yeah. um, to me, that's that's like... I hate not having clarity drives me crazy. And, and I, and I hate having false clarity when I know that I haven't reached the level of honesty with myself. Um, and sometimes I'll be like, you know, my CEO, CEO and I, we were having a conversation not too long ago and we're, he's like, well, what do you want with this area? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know, but not this, I don't know what I want, but I'm not willing to just say something to settle. I'm willing right. to let it hang and let let it come to me, right? Mm -hmm. Let's keep hashing this out. It's all it's rolling around in our heads now in our subconscious. And I just believe, and this probably like comes with wisdom and being around and experience, right? That you just know like sometimes you just let something sit and it marinates for a while. 
That's that you know RAS working. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's going to show up. And so, you know, I've learned to be a little more patient with those types of things, but I hate that false clarity. Yeah. Because it's not authentic.